Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Rohan Kanelwal, your marrow surgery faculty. And it's my honor to introduce Dr. Anshul to all of you who secured rank seven in the recently conducted INICT exam. Dr. Anshul has been a marrow plan C user, and all of us are extremely proud of him. Congratulations, Anshul. Why don't you tell us a bit about your journey and how does it feel like? Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, it feels absolutely amazing. And uh, the results were expected to come probably a little sooner in the afternoon. And I was very anxious all the time. So it feels great uh, that the result turned out good. Uh, so this was my second attempt at INICT. I had given my first one in November, uh, last November, in which I got a rank of 715. Then I appeared for NEET in March, in which I got a rank of 48. And then finally, in this May INICT, I secured a rank of 7. And uh, this has essentially been my PG prep journey so far. That's great. So, I mean, there's been consistent improvement in your uh, ranks. So, I'm sure you must be doing something correct. And uh, I'm sure users would be very keen to hear that from you rega uh, regarding how you were going about things and how you were improving your rank in every subsequent exam. Uh, so, Anshul, when did you start uh, using Marrow? Uh, so, so, I first started using Marrow in my third year. Uh, in my first and second year, I was, uh, I was focusing only on reading the standard books. So I did not go for any uh, coaching. And my seniors also suggested starting from uh, third year. So that is when I first joined Maro. I uh, The first subject that I watched was actually surgery. And uh, since at that time, I did not really know uh, like about the uh, pre-made pre notes. So I made my own in my notebook. And those are the first notes that I made for PG prep. And uh, I have I've still been using them. And I think uh, that is where I started. That's great. That's great. Uh, so you mentioned some very important things. One, you mentioned that you read standard textbooks, which I'm very happy to hear about. Uh, can you tell uh, the students which all standard textbooks did you read in first and second year? Uh, so so uh, we have a very uh, nice thing going on that our seniors tell us which books to refer to. So in my first year, uh, I read Harper cover to cover and I also referred to Lippincott for certain uh, slightly more difficult units. And then uh, I referred to uh, Genong and Guyton for physiology, different units from different books as suggested by seniors. So those were the two standard books in the first year. Then in the second year, I uh, read Robbins like several times because I think it's a really nice, written, nicely written book. And uh, yes, so yeah. those were my base. So I think so that's great. I and mean, it's so heartening to see that uh, somebody reading standard textbooks uh, because that's what we have done all throughout our MBBS. And I think so I, it has a huge impact on the concepts which you make and long-term retention of those concepts. Uh, so, so that is great. And third year, you started uh, using Marrow uh, and you started making notes. So did you watch all the videos, all subjects? Uh, yes, sir. So at that time, it was edition four. And uh, I completed the, I started with the major yeah. subjects, which is medicine, surgery, oxygen, and PSM in like a random sequence. And I used to, I tried to make sure that in my third year, I was able to complete the uh, major subjects videos as well, uh, as well mm -hmm. as the minor subjects, uh, which are covered in aims with surgery, like ENT, Ophthal and Ortho. So th that was my goal. And uh, I was more or less able to do it because of the lockdown. We were all at home. So I had lots of time to kill. And so, and I really enjoyed watching the videos. So that is why I was able to complete uh, that part then. And then in my final year, I ref uh, referred to more books and then completed the rest of the subjects. So that at the end of final year, my notes were already made. So during internship, I just had to revise and uh, that's it. So I think so very, I, I love the clarity which you have, Anshul. And, and that's the clarity, you know, which we are looking in uh, students. And that's what we tell them to have. Unfortunately, students uh, complicate their journey. Uh, love the clarity that by final year, all the subjects were seen, all the notes were made. So in internship, you just had to revise. It's as simple as that. He's just summed it up in two beautiful lines. Uh, so Anshul, you told me that you want to take up medicine. Um, any words regarding the medicine content in marrow? Uh, so I think that um, marrow have medicine is very unique in the sense that uh, it covers everything very comprehensively. And uh, in certain uh, aspects, it might even be a replacement if you have not been able to read standard textbooks. Although uh, it's not ideal, but it's definitely a very good replacement if uh, you're looking for one. And uh, with the kind of comprehensive way which sir covers everything, uh, it becomes uh, more likely that you will know most of the questions in the paper, even if the paper is a bouncer like this time. Hmm. So I think uh, that's very nice. Let me ask you the million dollar question. How did you revise medicine? Because that's something which a lot of students uh, 
face trouble with they say that the content is too much like you said it's comprehensive it covers path it covers pharma as well so it covers a lot of other things but they find it difficult to revise how do you, how did you go about doing that uh, sir so the first time is definitely going to be an uphill journey for anyone so so was it for me and but at that time i did not focus on rushing through it rather than that i tried to uh, look for uh, tables in harrison or anything anywhere any flow chart or any guideline which would actually make my notes more concise uh, so that i don't have to read the paragraphs again and again so i used to edit my notes that way so that at the end i did not have to again go to a standard source I, once i had made my notes i just had to restrict to them and then after that it was all about trying to uh, highlight the, the most important points in each revision so that the next time you have to do little a uh, little less so that also means that you try to separate the conceptuals from the factuals and you try to highlight only that stuff which you will actually need to revise on the last 10 days and not everything that you uh, you know should actually have a concept for and which has some logic to it so that's how you separate the two and where the factual part is actually doable but if you start doing the whole thing then it becomes a lot less so how did you segregate this content which you wanted to revise in the end did you make a 20th notebook or did you just highlight these aspects in your notes uh so so i did partly uh, both of the things because uh, for certain things i felt that if i just took a screenshot and i made a 20th uh, telegram group i could just send it to, to that group and see the group later for certain things i made my own small uh, notebook notes like handwritten notes so i used both the small notebook as well as the telegram group for last minute review, revision so that 20th telegram group which we've spoken about that's that i think is a very useful uh, way to create uh, this book if you don't want to write it down and a quicker way as well to revise at the end yes sir uh, that's that's great anshul one more thing is do you think that the uh, being in aims is an advantage for the inicit exam uh, not of course uh, you know it's a, it's the premier institute but the Uh, the kind of curriculum which you have that you don't have a third professional exam and everything is just at the end of fourth year so essentially yes. you're getting two years to uh, do all the major subjects and then you can pace yourself like you did the major subjects first so does that uh, play a role as well uh so i think that it doesn't make much of a difference honestly because uh, mm-hmm. the one added disadvantage might be that uh, emsonians generally tend to not read uh, the minor surgical subjects like ent ophthal in that depth, that much depth because we are not really tested for it as a separate prof so it becomes a small part of a bigger subject and that way it re- reduces so that is why we tend to face a lot of difficulty in these subjects even while preparing for the pg exam especially for exams like neat which actually include these subjects quite heavily so uh, i think it's ultimately a balance i mean <laughs> there is fun to have but there is also a price to pay so And I think so. All of you in third year, you're busy with pulse as well. Yes, sir. I mean, that is a well-known fact. I guess. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, uh, Anshul, how did you utilize the Marrow Q Bank, and what would be your tips for users uh, who are preparing for future NICT exams? Uh, sir, so I think that the Marrow Q Bank is actually one of the best because uh, it is almost errorless, and uh, most of the uh, things are going to be absolutely like reference-based and correct. and uh, there are attached pearls as well which i find very very useful because in several places it's you know much easier to look at a r- table or a flow chart instead of looking at the whole thing separately and that is all given in the pearls so i used to actually integrate the pearls and the cubank explanations to some extent into my notes or into my final revision notebook or whatever and i used to highlight the most important points in that as well into uh, a separate pdf so that i could uh, revisit that only the most important points in it and uh, that is why i think cubank was very essential the one module that i completed through and through was actually the pyq module and you know pyq is a so important so what's more important is where you do them from so if you do them from a source which is reliable uh, regarding the recall as well as the explanations it's obviously the best so i did all the pyq modules for sure so that was, that was really good this so th- that i think so again you've summed it up beautifully that uh, you know you done the cubank the additional points and the pearls you've added to your notes and to your 20th notebooks and you mentioned a very important thing about the marrow cubank being errorless so you know doing the pyqs also you know that you're getting the right information yes. uh so this time's exam uh, do you think the number of pyqs were similar or less or more uh, so i had given the november one and this one as well so i think they they were quite uh, slightly different pa- papers because the november paper had uh, more like uh, common topics asked and common things asked which could be done if you had you know done a good reading of the matter but this time there were a lot of uh, dip- unique and different questions which were 
or um, like not covered almost in uh, any subject so that was uh, one major difference between the two papers regarding pyqs i think both had some direct repeats and a lot of topic repeats that is the usual trend and that was continued this time as well but the one liner factual questions this time they were the different thing right so anshul one thing which i always um, talk to students about and i want your honest opinion on that that yes. there are a lot of students who are just doing pyqs they think that just by doing pyqs you can qualify and get a good rank uh would you agree to that statement or would you say that it is also important to have a good depth of concepts for an exam like this time where not everything was based on pyqs so i think i would strongly disagree with that statement because i think that uh, pyqs are not sufficient they are only a necessity nowadays because there are going to be multiple new questions in the paper which are not based on previous topics even and they will determine your rank to a great extent so i think doing the pyqs is a must rather than a something that is enough and if you don't do them it will cost you a lot but if you do them it might not even be that useful so it's like uh, if you're not going to do anything at least do the pyqs but definitely it won't it won't be sufficient yeah so matlab if pyq nahi kiya aur agar pyq galat hua to rank bahut piche jayegi yes. but agar pyq correct kar liya to wo to sabhi ka correct ho raha hai so the differentiator yeah. is not going to be the pyq yes sir agree so um what about uh, your assessment how frequently were you taking grand tests and um, tell us about that journey as well uh so i uh, used to take uh, i used to take grand tests at like specific timings rather than you know taking a lot of tests i used to take one test uh, like when i was midway through the syllabus and one test at the end of the syllabus regarding like every cycle of revision for example in one cycle i would give only two tests so my main motto behind giving a test was to look at my mistakes and to find out where i'm making those for example in the last gt i gave before uh, may i nice gt i got a rank of uh, around 300 or something and that was mainly because i had lost my marks in subjects which i hadn't covered while in the subjects which i had covered i was doing fairly well so you know if you analyze it that way it's more useful it gives you a better insight into the preparation instead of looking at the overall uh, gt score or rank so that's why i gave fewer gts but i analyzed them like through and through so that was the main strategy perfect perfect so you told me about the videos you told me about the q bank you told me how you utilize pearls and the gts as well now um anshul i completely agree with you that uh, the undergrad years should be utilized to make your notes so that when you're starting internship you have all your notes at one place or at least underlined notes at one place which you can revise now once your internship started can you just give me a, a rough timeline which can help others as well that first reading of your notes and the q bank took how much time and then how many revisions did you do during your internship okay uh, so uh, like i would like to say one thing here that even my preparation during my internship wasn't uh, absolutely perfect because i ended up with a not so desirable rank in the first attempt but then right. uh, you know i think the first decision you want to make is whether you want to give this attempt very seriously and it's going to be your last or do you want to actually do much better in the may one rather than you know rush through things in the november attempt because everybody gets that much idea at the beginning itself how much are they supposed to do in that period of time so i think that's the first thing after that you should divide it in a in such a way like uh, if i talk about my uh, post november inct strategy it was more mm -hmm. like first three months i was just compiling everything into a a uh, solid set of notes uh, not not the main notes but the revisable ones which i could do in the next 40 days or so so that was the first cycle which uh, took me around uh, three whole months and in that process i also integrated a lot of stuff from wherever i felt like like if i felt that stroke was inadequate so i went to the stroke guidelines and added that so you can do all of that in this long span of time after that the next revision should be around 40 days 40 45 days for me and uh, then uh, you should focus more on the memorizing part over here because you already have the you know the solid framework that you need or the must know stuff that you have condensed in those uh, revision notes and then you just keep memorizing them so you do that once in 40 days and then once more in the last 15 days and in the process in of the last 15 days is when you should make the choti copy actually because that is when you actually realize what are the most volatile things which you are still forgetting so uh, that is also one thing and this way i think three revisions are a good uh, strategy to go with perfect so i think so i completely agree don't compromise on the first reading and that first reading is the time to add more stuff to your notes 
and to make them more concise for future revisions. And then future revisions, you can cut down the time by half like you did. And at least three revisions would be uh, sufficient. Perfect. This Choti copy, which you mentioned on the 20th notebook or the telegram groups, um, when did you start working them during undergrad or you started working on them during internship? So I uh, started working on them actually to very towards the very end. So uh, after I was at the latter half of my second or the uh, penultimate revision, that is when I started making it. And I just kept adding to it in the last revision as well. And uh, so that around five days before the exam, I already had my choti copy. And the last five days were just about, you know, ab jo bacha hai, wo ek bari padna hai, and jo uske baad hai, that is choti copy, that is it. So on the last day also, I was very nervous. I was just revising the things in the 20th notebook only, nothing else. Perfect. So I think so. Good, good plan. Make your uh, choti copy or 20th notebook or the telegram groups, even if it is two months before the exam or three months, that is good. But last May, you have to do all 19 subjects in the last five days. At least you should get your eyes on all 19 subjects is what you're recommending. That is the absolutely essential, sir. That is the one thing I've realized. Yes. Okay. Did you do first aid? Uh, sir, so I'm going to be very honest. I didn't do it through and through because I had planned it. But, you know, these things don't pan out because I was expecting myself to complete first aid very quickly after having yeah. done everything else. But it didn't happen that way. So I ultimately ended up doing only biochem and microbiology. And I think those two are pretty nicely given and uh, also general path. So these are the only three units that I did. Uh, other than that, I had plans of doing it, but I was not able to do it. Maybe so it's not a be must to do it. It's not a must I, as it turns out. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> so fine. If you have time, it's desirable. You can do it. Not a must. That's what Dr. Anshul is saying. He's got a rank seven. So I think so his uh, word holds uh, some value. Uh, so Anshul, um, were you the studious type all throughout your college life? Topper or what kind of a rank did you used to get in college? Uh, so, so I was like the kind of person who used to start studying towards the like la last moment. So I used to end up with uh, fairly average marks around more than 65%. But then that was uh, my thing. But I did not ever try to do too well. So I used to be somewhere in the top 15 or something. I don't know. Perfect. Perfect. And uh, what were your hobbies? What uh, kept you busy with, uh, I mean, other than studies? Uh, sir, so I love to play badminton and that used to take up a lot of my time uh, all through, especially my final year and my internship. And mm -hmm. partly it's because of that that I did not like pay too much attention to studies also sometimes. So I'm quite an, uh, yes. quite a fan of badminton that way. Uh, and that was, yes, my main hobby. Did you stop playing in the last two, three months leading up to the exam? So yes, because I had I was done with my internship, so I was at home anyway. So there was there were no courts to play nearby. So fortunately or unfortunately, I did not. So <laughs> right. Uh, one more thing which I want to know is uh, you said your rank in um, NEET was forty uh, something. Uh, that's what forty eight. Forty eight. Yes. So uh, what did you do between NEET and uh, INICD? Uh, sir, so actually uh, in NEET, I was uh, aiming for a rank within 100 because I thought that if I get that much in this, then I can probably manage a good, better rank in INICT. So a rank of 48 was actually very welcome for me. It was a very good confidence booster. And uh, I started with renewed zeal after the NEET result because ultimately my main target was INICT. So it was just uh, a, like, a, you can say a very good GT uh, that I gave and I was very happy with my result. So it only pushed me more and I made a final plan uh, so I managed two revisions between NEET and INICT. I love the clarity which you have, Anshul. And I think so you're going to go places with this kind of clarity. I'm sure you're going to make a great clinician. And I wish you all the best uh, from uh, uh, everyone from Marrow. So heartiest congratulations. Before we end the interview, any uh, you know words regarding the, uh, the UI and the tech uh, of Marrow? Because I think so. That team deserves a lot of mention. Uh, they unfortunately don't come to the forefront. Uh, any words for them? So actually, I'm very glad you said that because actually, uh, Maru has the best UI. That is a very well-known fact. And uh, that is one of the reasons that, you know, plays a very important role when you're watching videos and you don't want to. This is one factor which can, you know, be the decider between whether you do watch it or not. And therefore, it was very important for me to have a very fine, smoothly working app. And I'm very happy that uh, people used to respond to the bugs also very quickly on the Facebook group, the Marrow Links group. So I think that is also very nice. And uh, I'm very happy with the UI of Marrow. 
Perfect. Any other faculty whom you would like to mention uh, before we end? Uh, yes, I would like to mention uh, Sakshi ma'am, uh, her uh, algorithms and her diagrams and everything, it is just amazing. I, I would also like to mention Manisha ma'am uh, for uh, making ENT so easily memorizable. Uh, you don't even have to watch the notes again because ma'am makes you memorize within the video itself. So that is really good to active recall and that's very unique. Uh, so those are the teachers that I would definitely like to thank separately. Perfect. It was a pleasure talking to you Anshul. All the very best for your future. Take care. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you.